because they came from the ocean. And the reason we find ocean fossils is that the Earth was a lot warmer back then. So because the Earth was warmer, sea levels were higher. And so everywhere you see this light color, that means it was kind of a shallow ocean or shallow water. So we can see here in New Jersey, where I've circled, that most of New Jersey was underwater um, 65 million years ago. So that's why a lot of, it might feel sandy in fossil beds, and we're finding a lot of marine animals. We're finding squids and seashells and sharks and, and rays and urchins and all kinds of cool stuff. So this was in your guide that Russell and I made, and it shows you the different six main fossils. Now there's lots of other things that you can find down in the fossil beds, both fossils, very old things, and um, more recent things. So maybe you find part of a deer skeleton, or maybe you find some cool nuts or seeds from the trees that have dropped it. And maybe you find some trash, and sometimes trash can be kind of cool. I found a really old matchbox star. So that was kind of the coolest non-fossil thing that I found in the beds. Um, so I, these are the six most common, shark teeth being the least common, but I hear that somebody found one yesterday. So they're definitely out there. And Big Brook and Reminiscent are more known for their shark's teeth, but they do find less shells. Um, so I will say start with porosity. It's easy to get to, and you can find lots of things, and then you can move on to the others. So let's see what you guys found. First off, we have the Kimball family. It's a wave, Kimballs. And the Kimballs, if I can get my pointer on, the Kimballs found a few cool things. So this one, oh, my pointer lags over there. This one is a little fuzzy. But I'm not too sure what that one is. And then I'm gonna switch over to the other side. My pointer follows along. So the other side, these are pink nodots. And even though it is a low, um, of just a fragment, and lots of fossils we find are fragments. I can tell it's pink nodont because of the kind of parallel lines that are running here. You see how it's got those lines running across? And it's also very smooth. Those are two characteristics of pink nodont. Kind of these lines that grow kind of like waves on top of each other and the smoothness. So this is probably pink nut on two, so we have two fragments of this. But what I was most excited to think, see was this thing in the middle. So this thing in the middle kind of looks like a bullseye. So it's got circles that are concentric around each other. Um, and I can't see it from the side, but if it's pretty flat and maybe a little hollowed in the middle, what I think this is is some kind of vertebrae. So vertebrae are the bones that make up your backbone. So people have them, all mammals have them. But then also fish have them and sharks have them. So what I think is that this is a vertebrae of a fish or a shark. But it's kind of hard to identify species or even whether it's a fish or a shark um, from just small fragments. If we found more of them, that might be a clue. But it's been 65 million years and they're all jumbled. Um, but that's what I think that is. That's pretty cool. Um, a pretty cool find. So like I said, there's the six main things. But then there's also other cool stuff to find. All right, and this next one is from the Scalia family. Dominic and Anthony found these. Um, and they have another, a few more cool things. We have some more pink nodont over on the left. And sometimes pink nodonts get really thick as they get older. They get thicker and thicker. Um, so we got a really thick chunk over here. And again, I can see these concentric circles kind of growing out and being labels. Um, and then this. So this has the longest name of all the fossils. You might have seen it on the guide and been like, I don't know if I can say that. You can say it. You can say Tyrannosaurus Rex. You can say any of these. Its name is Agorostria mesenterica. So Agorostria mesenterica is another oyster, just like the pink nodont and the exodrama. But it's got a very different look. It has this jagged, this one might up, down, teeth-like thing. And it's very distinct. Sometimes it looks like the edge of a bottle cap. And our nickname for it is mice teeth. Now it is not from mice. The mammals were only just starting at the very end of the Cretaceous period. So it's not from mice. But if a mice mouse needs a Halloween costume, he might come down to the fossil base. And he might get this, and he'd have little dentures of teeth to wear to his Halloween party. So kind of an up, down. And 
And the one I'm carrying, holding, is actually a little bigger. And this is a slight variation. It's called Mama Thesis. I can ask you Mama Thesis. And that is named after Mama County, right where we are. Um, and then this one over here is different from the pink nadat because it's got these ridges. It almost looks like a ridged potato chip. So the one over here um, is exogyra. So exogyra, if you found a huge one, might be this big. But it's got those ridges that look like a ridged potato chip. And that's how you can tell the difference, even from a fragment, about what fossil you have. And then they found one of my favorites. This is what I tend to find sometimes it feels like the most. Um, and those are belemnites. So belemnites did not come from seashell creatures. They came from something that looks like a squid. And this is the one Russell found on his hunt. And so sometimes they're pointy on the top, sometimes the point breaks off. That's okay. They both work. Um, and they're kind of clear, as you can see in their picture, when they're a little bit wet and clean, like they just cleaned up their fossils. And those ancient squids were very squishy creatures. If you think about a squid or an octopus, then it's going to be squishy and that most of that is going to decompose when the animal dies but there are a few hard parts of all cephalopods so of the belemnite or of a squid or of an octopus and that's this rostrum so right here right where am i right up there is the rostrum and that was kind of a hard part it's kind of like the prow of a ship which is where the name comes from it kind of drove the animal through the water and so that's all that remains, is that kind of bit of cartilage that I see they're looking at theirs <laughs> um, that they found. Um, and those are pretty cool to find. And then our next slide is the Lapari family who found, let's see if they logged in, who found lots of things. Um, and then so a lot of things you'll recognize, start to recognize. So we got lots of pink nadants. Lots of smooth pink nadant. We've got some of those bottle cap things that look like, um, like a up-down kind of mice teeth, Agorastria mesenterica. But there were two things that I was excited to see on this picture. One is Miss Amanda's favorite fossil. Miss Amanda's favorite fossil is a brachiopod. And brachiopods kind of stand out because they don't break the same way the other ones do. So you usually find them whole. And then these perfect little fossils. You have to have good eyes to find them, but they're definitely in the beds. And they're perfect little fossils. When you get both sides. Oops, drop them. They're not tiny. So you get both sides, and they're just little round, perfect fossils. 65 million years old and still in great shape. So that's pretty impressive. Brachiopod comes from the name arm foot. So the brachiopod had a little hole down in the bottom where it kind of stuck out this arm. And that would hold on to stuff. And that's how it would filter feed. It would filter feed kind of upright, a little different than the oysters do. And then the other cool thing that they found besides the brachiopod was this is another piece of pink nadon probably. But see how it has so many holes in it? All of those holes are evidence of another creature. There used to be sea sponges, just like there are today. You can make loofahs out of them now. Um, but the sea sponges, we don't have any remains of them, because if you think about a sponge, nothing much is going to, not many hard parts that can be preserved in those circumstances. So we don't have remains of the creature, but we do have remains that it was there when we find these. These are double fossils, because they have holes in them. And those holes show that the sea sponge, look at this piece of thing on. It's got a few holes, not as many as theirs. They kind of really cool them. Um, but it's got these holes in it because the sea sponge came in here and tried to drill little holes into here to try and eat the oyster inside. They like to eat oysters the same way some people like to eat oysters today. So if you examine all, any of your fossil specimens closely, um, then you might see these little holes. And those are evidence that another creature came and try, tried to eat your oyster. Maybe it succeeded. Maybe it didn't. We don't know why your oyster died. It's been 65 million years ago. And our CSI is not that good. Um, but it tried to, and those little holes are evidence of that. So they're kind of double fossils. I also always like to see fossils that have a hole in the middle. This happens a lot in the pink nadon. It's kind of the weakest spot. Because then you can make them into necklaces. So besides your shark's tooth necklace, you can make yourself a pink nadon necklace. And then the last slide I have to show you was something the Soden family found yesterday. And it's, a little, it's about the size of a dime, um, very light and very thin. 
And it's something I hadn't seen before. And we find things that we can't always identify easily and that we wonder about. They were wondering if it was a sand dollar. Um, and it certainly looks like a sand dollar. Sand dollars have five-point symmetry, so it would kind of look like a five-pointed star here, um, kind of a radial symmetry, like a flower as petals going out. This has five points that go out. Um, sand dollars really took off during the age of mammals, which came next, the Paleocene era. Uh, which is a little which is a little after our fossil beds um, but there were sea spiny sea urchins around in the cretaceous beds so in our beds there was also sea urchins and other things um, so we could start to see the divergent or it could be something else that we haven't researched and discovered what it is yet um, so paleontologists the people who study these old things looked at lots of old charts um, you don't always have pictures of things. And remember, a picture is just one specimen. So the, these field guides like this are trying to average all the specimens. So if we were trying to make a field guide for people, you could do a picture of me, or you could do a picture of one of you, and we wouldn't look exactly the same. The specimens don't always look exactly the same. But if you tried to draw what a general person might look like, you could put it in a field guide like this. I'm gonna go back to my general guide. And now I have someone else in the office, Miss Kim is helping me unmute people. Um, so let's go back to just seeing everybody. And I will be happy to take any questions or if you have something you want to show me and you have a video camera. Um, let me go back to trying to see everybody. There we go. So if you have something to show me, there is a, um, you can chat it to me or you can wave it to me and we'll try and unmute you and take any of your questions. Oh, I see somebody's got holding something up. Uh, Denise Bove is the name. I have a feeling that's not your name. Let's go back there. Hey, hold on. We can hear you now. Oh, God. It's a mouse tooth. How did you know it was a mouse tooth? <laughs> What'd you see? You saw it on the paper? I saw it on the paper. paper. You got this? I found this. Whoa, that's a big one. Very nice. Does that have any foss other fossils stuck inside it? Oh, you found a necklace one too. Sometimes you can talk really big ones. Like there could be other fossils kind of jammed inside. Oh. So that can be pretty cool too. Yeah. Let's you find them at Torsi or somewhere else? Uh, Percy. Very nice. All right. Okay. All right. I see uh, Micah is raising her hand. We'll switch over to Micah. Hold on a minute, Micah. We got to get you unmuted. Okay. There we go. Okay, Micah, try and talk. I think I can hear you now. What'd you uh, find? Um, my, well, it's not really a question. Okay. Uh, Remember the shark thing? Mm -hmm. um, actually, sharks don't have any bones. Um, so the vertebrae you're talking about? Yeah, sharks' bones are a little different because they have a lot of cartilage in them. That's true. But the their uh, spine kind of builds up in a similar way. Okay. Okay? I said that because I just wandered on this show called Weird But True. Um, mm -hmm. Disney Plus today. Um, it's really fun. Oh, it's a good recommendation. Yeah, sharks have been around for a really long time. I so know. If you're studying modern sharks, they haven't changed that much. And They've been around since sharks. dinosaurs have been around. Yeah, there's a really cool shark called a goblin shark. And goblin shark teeth, we can find, they're kind of the long... I actually do know what they look like. Yeah, and they still exist in today's oceans, and they're really strange looking if you have a look up videos of this. Wow. Cool. Oh, speaking of shark teeth, I have one more cool thing to show you guys. It is not from the foresty beds, but I thought you all might like to see it. You guys know what this is? No? I see some yeses, I see some nodding. It's a megalodon tooth. So we bought Megalodon! Yeah, megalodon tooth. 
Uh, we bought this one online because they aren't found in the forest beds. Uh, Megalodons were, lived in the age of mammals, so they lived after our beds came around. This one was found in North Carolina, and that's a good place where you can go hunt them. Sometimes I even find them on the beach in North Carolina, so if you have a vacation there, check the beaches. You might find them. Someone once found, thought they found one um, in Seabright, but it turned out to be a great white shark tooth, not a megalodon tooth. Right, do we have any other questions? Oh, I see Ridge has a question. My dad found a fox with foxes under his bed, and it has a shark. Is that shark's tooth in it? Okay. All right. Is that the shark's tooth, or is it the imprint? I can't quite tell. Right. An imprint. Yeah, that's another good way that we can tell that there were fossils. Sometimes the fossil itself this doesn't. Has a clam if we find a footprint. That one's got a clam in it. Is it a brachiopod, maybe? Those are really common. Let's see, you can find them. So brachiopods lived, lived even longer than I think than sharks. Brachiopods go back like 550 million years ago. And in our oceans today. So you can find fossils there, so you can find them under your bed. We found them in the Shark River when I was a kid. Ah, Shark River, so another local one. Yeah, that looks like a brachiopod to me. Oh. A scallop look. Right. Thank you for sharing. All right, I see Colin is raising his hand. What do you want to share, Colin? Question, uh, is this like a shark tooth or something? So like, the necklace that you got is a shark's tooth. So these are real shark's teeth, but they are not fossils. So they're not that old. That's what changed a shark tooth from just being a regular shark's tooth to a fossil. And if we compare it to a fossil tooth, they're, they're going to be different colors. So most fossilized shark's teeth have gotten a lot darker with age. And so they're this black, almost checkered color. And a little bit sharper. Yeah, when you when they get older, you know, 65 million years, they're going to start to dull, just like, and being tossed around in the water, just like the pebbles get smooth, the fossils get smooth. Too. Right, I think the Zampellas had their hands up. We can get them unmuted. Um, then she's going to unmute you. We can hear you now. What do you want to share? Brendan has this big fossil he found that he wow. wanted to see. Very cool. Can you show me the other side too? So it's so big. Sure. Very nice. So I think that one is exogyra because of the twist to it. So just like uh -huh. when you have this interesting. That's exogyra. And gyra, that's and one then of the twist, like gyra. <laughs> What else we got? Ah, and uh, um, I found this one. You have to hold it. Oh, Ooh. so it's another one. I think that hole is a little broken open. You can make it into a necklace, and you froze a little bit, which ex actually you froze where the screen was. We'll give you a moment for the internet to catch up, at least for me. So they had another piece of pink on. and they've dropped out, but they had another piece of pink on that had that hole worn in the middle of it, but I think their hole was so worn that it broke through, so I'm not, they'd have to be a little more creative with their stream. I know who that is. Is there anyone else who'd like to share? Um, even if you don't have video, you're welcome to come on and talk to me if you had a question. Ah, the Laparis are raising their hands. Shannon and Lapari, but that's not Shannon. That is Colin and Hannah. I can hear you guys now. What do you want to say? Um, we found some marbles, and then we find a clam. <laughs> I, 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 found, I found two. Um, my dad, I found one clam, then I found a white Oh, you found the one with the hole, that's right. One more, oh, yeah. one more, the one more in the woods and one in it, I was trying to 
open it. Then I saw a tool so we can open it. And we went to North Carolina too. Oh, you did? Yeah. It's a good place to vacation, but it's a good spot for us too. And what I saw when Daddy found for me is it's a blue rock. It's a blue shell. And I gave it to me. I was trying to open it. It didn't have any things to open it. <laughs> um, and I think the clam died here. So I, but the white one I found, I don't think it was. Um, it was a whole shell. But I found one big one because it was sticking. You guys just found lots of fossils. How did you find so many? What is your recommendations? Where should we dig? Um, I, I just dig in the water and I, 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 I just like a little tiny, like, fossil. Like, in the book mm -hmm. I found it had, it had, like, um, a warm shape, um, animal that, that, that died. So. And I... And I found the, um, the, uh, the other one, it was a little tiny puddle. It was short, too. It was not... It was, it was, Excellent. And, so you guys found a lot. And, and yes, all of these fossils are definitely very dead. They've been dead 65 million years. So, a long time ago that they died. Excuse me, I saw a little... Yellow was mm -hmm. the big one that I found only for me and Connie. And, and it broke. It was a squid, right? It was squid. Yeah. And it, mm. we broke it in the car, but uh, uh, that's the squid we found. That, that's just, that's just, I, I found a little bit, I, I found a baby squid. And I found an orange one. That's the orange. That's the right one. Right. Like, it can be like, like Alright, thank you for sharing. I see the Zamtellas got back online, so I want to switch over so they can show their last, the other fossils they didn't get to. Okay. okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Alright. Um, Go ahead, Aiden. So, this one from Target is in a box, and it's called a crow shark, too. Oh, very nice. Did you have to, like, break it open it inside something that you had to excavate? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you had to yeah. excavate, right? Yeah. Very cool. Shake your head, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mackenzie has this one for you. All right, Mackenzie, what do you have? Ooh, that's really good evidence of that boring sponge. Ooh, a boring sponge. Yeah, so a boring sponge. That's pretty really neat. <laughs> Try to eat your fossil. Oh. So you get those bubbles. <laughs> Friend. <laughs> so cool. Wow. Now we know why there's more. Yeah, there's some lots of holes in mine. Wow. Well, thank you. Mom. You're very welcome. I think that's all the hands that I saw. Oh, I see the Christie family. The family labeled themselves Christie. They're showing me something in a bag. What do you guys have? Um, this is a stingray tooth. And then this one we found. We found um, this one. What? What's a stingray tooth? I'm going to see. It has a little bit of blood. <laughs> Is that that place where you use big machinery? Yeah. I found one new thing um, a couple weeks ago that I only just identified this morning as I was getting ready. Let me hold it up instead of a piece of paper. I thought it was another shark's tooth, but in doing my research, I think it's a mochasaur tooth. And a mosasaur, at first I was like, is it a dinosaur? 
Mosasaurs aren't dinosaurs. They're another ancient reptile. They're more closely related to snakes. But they were an ancient sea-going reptile. That's the cute kind of them. Well, thank you all for coming. It sounds like you all had really good fossil adventures. And I hope you come to some of our other live events. On Monday, we're going to be practicing how to make lanyards with Miss Amanda. And fun there. And there's more camp skills next week. Um, so me and Russell are all very excited um, to see what it, you've been creating. And if you keep sending in pictures uh, or videos or just send us a line about what you're finding, it's all really fun. I see lots of necklaces out there and camp shirts. And my favorite thing is to see a camp shirt in the wild and when I'm driving around Middletown. I'm going to end the meeting now. And I hope you all have a great day and try and stay dry in the sun, the storm we're getting. Bye! Bye! Bye. 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 Bye.